In this video, I want to share with you how to draw something using the grid format. So first of all, you need your reference photo. Um, it doesn't have to be printed out. It can be like a postcard or even like magazine. Um, so anything you would like to use drawing. But you also need one of these plastic sheet protectors. You need a ruler and I like to use a Sharpie. I also have one of these cutting mats and the only thing why I like it is because you can see the line so much clearer. So what I'm going to do is I am using my tape to tape down. Make sure it's aligned really well. Tape it down. Maybe one more here at the side. So you be sure it's not moving. And then all you want to do is you want to take your Sharpie, you want to take your ruler, and you want to make guidelines for yourself. We call this a, the grid technique. So one inch apart, you can even do half inches. Um, if you have small a smaller photo, you can even go smaller. And you keep on going. I go side to side. And you do this once because then after that, you will just have it. You can even do the one side inches and on the other side, uh, like half inches, like smaller, a smaller grid. Um, and I will show you then how to use it. So now you want to also do this so it can form as a grid. So you need vertical and horizontal lines. If you like drawing and you want to try how to draw, this helps a lot with perspective. Especially if you have something that's a little bit more detailed, like the core that Bridget so kindly shared with me that she took a photo of. Kind of, oh. I kind of smudge them a little bit. It is probably smarter to smudge from the other side so you don't smudge them. Mm -hmm. You get the idea. Oh, wait. Didn't do a good job here. Check to make sure you can. Also, do on your ruler. It's just sharp, it's fine. Okay, so make sure you can see everything. So you see the grid. Yeah, I can take off my little tapes. I slide my reference photo inside. Actually, before I do this, I'm going to do a section over here at the bottom, adding more lines. You will see why in a minute. So again, I just make sure I align everything up. Add my reference photos. Get my Sharpie out again. And maybe like this much. Just do a few more lines. I 
will show you why this can also works very easily. Okay, so you do this once. It's a pain to do it once, especially if you do not have one of these easy mats with the grid on it, but then you just have to measure. Okay, so now I have a block that just have a few more lines. Okay, so that I can use later. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure my reference photo fits. into my grid. Then what I like to do is I want to see, I want to retrace this and I'm going to show you on a different piece of paper. This is watercolor paper. And I want to do exactly the same thing. So I kind of like to do it this way. And the only reason is because it's a little smaller to fit in my camera view. It's not going to influence us a lot. So it will be fine. So first I'm using my, my, my ruler and I just make on every inch, I make a line. So all the way to nine. So I have a nine by 12 paper. I move a little further down and I do again on every inch. I like to use a, me a mechanical pencil for this one because the points stay sharp. Then I flip my ruler like this. I flip my paper. I make sure it fits and I draw my first line, making sure I hit both my pencil lines. But then I also want to hit every inch I am making another grid now these lines you want to definitely make softer or be better yet you want to do this on a separate piece of paper so you can just trace your drawing in case you make a few you know you don't want to erase too many times on your watercolor paper so making sure you, your pencil line is soft and make sure you go through both your dots to make sure you have even lines like this. When you get close to the bottom, make sure you align up really well here and then on every inch you make a little mark. Trace my line. Trace your line. Make your marks. I like to measure a few, you know, like a few spots out of each other, just so I can make sure my ruler stays straight. If you go too close, you may not go too straight. Okay, and then make sure you hit both of them when you trace your grid. And I keep on going super soft because these lines will need to be erased in the end. Especially if you work on your watercolor paper straight. If you're going to use on like plain copy paper, doesn't matter. Sometimes when I struggle, when I, there's a drawing with a lot of detail, I would draw on a copy paper first and then transfer it on my watercolor paper. So I do not have to erase too many times. Okay, so I didn't have to really do the whole thing, but I just wanted to give you the idea that you now have two matching um, grids. So you can decide how and where and how you wanna draw in it. Now, I am turning my paper just landscape and the only purpose is so it's easier to see um, when I'm, on the camera view. 
So I'm gonna go like this. So what if you do not have a plastic sleeve? Then you can just print it out and draw your lines on top if you don't care for the photo. So it doesn't really matter. If you do not have it. It's just nice if you do it once and then you have it and you can just slide in different photos that you wanna try draw. Okay, so now I want to count my blocks. So doesn't really, again, really matter where you start. You can count from there if you want this exactly. But what you want to see is, does my tire, and it's a little hard to see, where does it hit? So you can, of course, slide it up if you're, grid doesn't go all the way here. See how I, I adjusted it by moving it up over here. And to make sure that it maintain whatever you want it to maintain, you can tape it so it's not moving like this. You can do two or three spots. Because if you have a tire that kind of is line that goes through the tire, it might just be a little harder. So you can definitely adjust your picture in your grid. So it's easy for you to follow. Then you wanna see what you see in the little block is actually what you are going to draw. So I can see that roughly this car fits in three blocks. So say I start here, one, two, three blocks, and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven across. So my, let me just get a different pencil. My car, let's move it over one more. So my car is gonna roughly fit here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, a little bit over, but my car will roughly fit here. It doesn't look like it, but let's do it so you can see what I mean. Now, everything you see is what you, everything in the little square you see is what you roughly kind of want to draw. Me, I like to do outlines rough first and no details. So I can check and, and compare the whole time to make sure I can see the, that my, um, Proportions are correct. Just looking for that word. Okay, so let's start at the back. So I'm not going to use these ones. I'm going to start here. At this bottom one, over here, over here, I see only a little bit of the, yeah, the orange. Do you see? A little bit. I go into the next square and I keep on drawing a little bit, it goes a little down. I use my pencil really light. It goes straight and it dips down in the second one. So, so one, two, three, four. And then it starts to go up here by the corner. And it almost crosses in the cross. And it goes about halfway in that one. About halfway. It's a little more like this. And it makes a nice little triangle shape right here. So I go down. And I can take my pencil to see if it's aligned, is it a little higher? It looks a little higher. So it makes this little triangle here and then make another little triangle here. 
and I'm in the upper corner. So now, because I did this smaller grid in here, it is, so if you divide these ones again, and you can just kind of, because there's a bit more detail, and you can wing it, you will see that we are in the upper corner of the grid. So I'm going to go more here. And then in seven, it kind of goes a little up again. And then it goes curvy. It makes a little triangle here. It goes one, two, three, one, two, three. It goes all the way to this one. And then where it's touching, it goes up. It dips a little down. Like probably half. So use your ruler so you can see the angles. And then, so it goes a little over this line just for this one. And then it comes down here, comes down. So full one goes down, here goes down. And then goes like this and goes down. I like to take my rubber eraser and I see if I can just make some of my lines a little bit, you know, less, take, make it a little less. You can kind of see the outline a little bit better. Okay, so now we go back. So we are here, and so like three quarters up. And kind of here, you wanna do this curve. It's like a small line that goes from the back and it's following just underneath your guideline. And it kind of goes down by the door here. This line actually goes up. See how it's following the curve of the window? And around the window, and it kind of curves back, maybe not as much. And then this little V window that goes below that line Again, make sure if you have too many lines, just erase it. I love these, um, these. Um, I call them a putty eraser, but I think there's a different name because you can kind of mold it the way you want to get a nice point and you can just kind of get in there. You want to make a window. So 
do a few lines, not a lot of detail. So you can actually see how you can change shapes. Because sometimes if you, if you go too quickly with the details, you have to erase so much if it's not working out. So be careful to go ahead and do too many details. And too many lines. I never switch over to my mechanical pencil. Sometimes the mechanical pencil is a little easier because the lines remain skinny. So you want to follow the curve of the roof. And then you want to go down. So this window um, I think I'm going to draw it inside. So it's kind of in the middle of this guideline, a little bit more to the side. I'm going to go down here. Again, super soft. Dip a little down below that guideline. Go up, round corners. A little bit, but it's basically on that line. So you can basically stay on this line. Let me switch. I think it will be easier to see. Um, there's a line coming through these windows. Oh, we yeah, are much easier. So much more. So much skinnier. Okay, let me see if I can clean up this line. So you definitely will sit with your eraser in your hand in the beginning. You will definitely adjust, adjust, adjust the whole time getting used to sketching. Um, if you're confident, you can just draw, you know, a thick line, a straight line. If you are not, I haven't drawn a card in a while, so I'm like, wait, I need to look back. And that is also why reference photos are so great, because you definitely have something to look at. It's that little wheel cap thing. If it feels, wait, I'm a little straight you need to be straight definitely straight yeah Mm -mm -mm. This one can go a little bigger. So now you want to see how close it is to the lines. So my guideline is here. The guideline is there. So that's why I say do not draw too many details because you may have to adjust your lines quite a bit. Um, so don't go, don't draw too dark and then adjust. And always be erasing to make sure it looks good. These ones are touching. This one is touching. This one is not coming all the way down. There's a big black line here. This one is curving up. Remember how I said it's almost going through. So make sure you go all the way. And then come down. Again, I'm not going to worry too much to make my lines too dark. Then there's a, so that it's, you can almost see nothing and then it gets a little bit bigger here. So if I can zoom in more. I want you to see the reference the whole time. Okay. Now 
you want to go bigger, 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 bigger. See how it's getting bigger here. And then this is the line. So it goes all the way up until that line. Comes down. It doesn't go down so much. I need to make my curve a little shorter. It, it hits this triangle. And it's actually going all the way to that line. It's at that line that by the cross. So I'm going to do that. And there's something here. And then there's a space between the wheels. So let's do the wheels because that will also help our car a little bit more. So it comes like about this much. It's not touching. And we know it needs to be sort of kind of round. And then the wheel Basically touching here, just a little over. Let me see what, what I can erase. I wish I can zoom in or make it a bit lighter to just see the wheel because I think you see a little bit to make the wheel three-dimensional, you see a little bit from the front. And I do, of course, have the photo because Bridget shared it to me, so I have it now to pull it up. And then there's another. Okay. And then this one at the back, again, it's really close to that. And a little higher. And it fits in here. So you always see what and where it aligns up with what or something. It is always something it aligns up like it aligns up here, it aligns up there. It's always easy to just find something. <laughs> so this wheel looks a little weird. I need to work on this wheel. I think it needs to go like this. It's just dark, so I cannot really see. It's just dark and it's the, it's the perspective. And because you cannot see everything, you may end up seeing half of this. Okay, now, so let's see. I'm hitting it right here. Can go a little lower. More like
I'm still trying to figure out where it is in my blocks. So I'm just doing, adding the little, little tiny details and see how it fits in my grid. Is, um, I don't know what you call these bars, but they are here. So basically, what you see here is what you want to draw in the square. And this is what you call the grid format. So it helps a lot with perspective, especially if you are new to drawing. So... By this line, and probably up to here is your other tire. There's some lights here. And another one. I'm going to do this. It's like a little, this wheel cup you see from the other side. There's a line that crosses here. That's parallel with the window. There's another, so there's actually two. Wait, I made it in the wrong place. It's more. A little down, and then it goes up to make a big rectangle. There's like a door handles here. It's the wipers here. Um. What else? Oh, let's add this line. So just below, so here is my grid. Just below the grid, there's like a little line for the hood. Goes here. It's like a dip down. Maybe not so much, but. I and mean, then of course it looks completely different as soon as you add color. So the inside of the car is also very dark. Um, I'm gonna do the back seat. And it's kind of like this, and then there's just, I don't even know what this is. Also not sure. Oh, side mirrors. Kind of a straight line. Do you see that straight line? Oh, I can go a little higher. So the grid helps you to align things. So it's easier to see So in the window, actually close to this grid line, touching, I think it's touching. 
go straight to touching here. There's like something in here. This the steering wheel, I guess. And something touching the middle. Go down. Touching the mirror. So the line touching the mirror, that line is touching the mirror. So, oh, wait, I didn't even see that. So there's, there's many things you can align things up. And then... Here is just going to go straight in here, in here to the wheel. More tight details. The style still looks a little wonky. Then when you have most of it down, so I have most of mine down, you lift it up, you look at it, squint your eyes, take a photo with it, of it, do something so you can see if your proportions are good. Now it looks kind of weird, but it, this is the way. So you use the grid to help you to draw smaller things. The smaller your grid is, the easier it is for you to fit in whatever you see in the little square is what you are drawing. So very easy to do it using the grid. So this is how I would do most of my drawings if I draw by myself. Um, let's add some color. So what I want to do is now I want to make my lines a little softer, a little bit less so I can watercolor over it. I also, um, oh, so let's do a little bit detail in the background. My grid goes bigger, so I have, I know I can, you know, easily add to it. So by the window here, let's see if I can fit everything. Yeah, like so. Um, there is a lamppost. Kind of touch you, will go like this, kind of goes up. So it falls one, two, three, and in the fourth block. One, two, three, fourth. Ooh. One, two, three, fourth. So here. Not too close to that grid line. Just make your lines going down to begin with. Do like this. Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So quarter, and then you want to do a little, maybe a little lower. Mm. Maybe not, let's see. We want to go a little wider. Still not really touching. And sometimes I catch myself, I want to draw much bigger than it really is. See how small that street light actually is. I think the, my balls can even be skinnier.
and there is a sign that is more like an oval so it goes a little bit in his the body of the pole even more right So remember, you want to leave enough space. Then you want to have another sign that goes here. Now, another thing that I always feel is a little hard is to see what kind of way the lines go. So if you use your grid line and you usually you can see it needs to go up a little bit. So that white line needs to go up a little bit. The same with the stop sign. See what I mean? The stops, the white needs to go up a little bit. So if that is hard for you also, the grid can help you. And then you can just use your ruler or something that is straight that you can just measure with. So it needs to go up. And then erase your lines out of that. Need to go up, touching here. There is a line there, and just under your grid, and then just above. of the hood. A little wider. Make some detail. Then you want to fill in the gap. Oh, now the side mirror here. We forgot about that one. Huh? So touching the side mirror, going a little up, going through your not too high. You may have to adjust. Your angle a little bit, and that's kind of where it ends. So raise the top. So adjust your angle. So you see where you hit it in all your spots. Then I do my second line. It's above the side mirror, and it's hitting them differently. Okay, and then below it's a little wall and then the top eight grass okay so here behind at the back there's also a mirror a uh, uh, light mine is a little bit big and then right here kind of with this line, more or less a line, there's a line, and another line, and then we'll make it, and then by the, oh, sorry. The same little, so it makes a little corner, I guess. Okay, now we have, oops very much interesting lines to to add and to draw so this is again lift it up check it out but i think we have most of it down 
take your eraser and now erase most, make your line skinny. So erase it and also erase all your grid lines. So this is why sometimes when you do this part and you know you're going to erase a lot, you want to use copy paper to do this on first and then we do the transfer like we normally do. Because this way you don't ruin your watercolor paper. You also want to use your pencil so light so it's easy to erase. If you use it too dark, it may just be very hard. Don't erase now your, your little guidelines here. That will be sad. Okay, so this is a very easy way. So I'm going to quickly add some pen and some watercolor to it. I also like to add um, or to use a white eraser for this. This is just not a great example, but a white eraser works really well. They soft and they do a really good job of um, erasing. Okay, in between, I'm gonna use my, my soft eraser that I can kind of manipulate to get into all these small spaces so I don't, wait, see? So I don't erase lines, I should not erase. That's my grid. Down. Adding a few things back. Yeah, I like to use a Sharpie pen or a Micron pen. My Micron pen is 0, .0 which is a little nicer, I think, than my Sharpie pen. But let me show you the difference. Micron is like this. Sharpie is like this. Well, they're basically the same. So whichever one you want to use. What you do want to look for is a permanent I love these Sharpie pens because they are pretty inexpensive and they're permanent. You can immediately start watercoloring uh, over it. I am going to start outlining using my Micron, but like I said, any nice pen that you have. And what I also like to do is do not such, more like sketchy lines. Like, see how my lines are very sketchy? I would, I would want to go more like this. So I'm just going to start here at the back and I'm just going to do a few, sometimes even doing a double line makes it nice. However, any way you want to do it, it's going to be great. You also don't have to outline it. You can just immediately start painting. However, sometimes doing the pen takes a little bit pressure off to now try to paint it super realistic with all the shadows and the things. Now, just a few tips to make it easier. Mm 
And you can also use paint to do this. You can also use permanent ink to do this, and then you can just watercolor over it. Make sure you lift your pat, your drawing up or take a photo or something so you can just give a nice little eye so you can see what it looks like. It's always nice to just squint your eyes a bit, look at it and see that you your perspective, perspectives are great. I'm just making up my own words again. I'm doing the back window. There's a forgotten seat in there that I didn't see. I'm just adding it. Side mirror. Okay, so now when I, I will show you why I also did the extra grid. Um, the smaller one yet in the corner. I'm trying to remind myself that I don't forget. This is a little tire. Is this little thing? I don't really know what it is. I always feel that when I do cars or bikes or that I don't really know terminology, I should be better. But I just don't know what it is. Don't be hard on yourself. You are just here to have fun. You know, I like to at the sketchy lines because to me it just kind of helps making it a little bit more sketchy. Adding a little bit more detail to this light. Looks like a little motion. Okay. And there is my cute little car. Um, because I use the micron, um, I can immediately erase. 
So if there's any more pencil lines, you can just erase it. And then let's go into the paint. So before we start painting, um, if there's any, so now, you, oh, I see I forgot my little handle. If there's anything you want to add, if you feel some of your lines are too thin, just go and double them up. You know. Sketchy lines are sometimes much better. Oh, I forgot about this light here. Okay, doke. So, getting my paint out, getting a bigger brush. So, I normally like to use the one that is half my pinky, which I don't know what I did with that brush. but I'm going to use a slightly bigger one for now. And the card is pretty orange. I'm going to get into my orange. Adding some yellow to it. Some yellow, some orange from the other side. A little bit more yellow at the top. And then put in some orange. Be careful when it's wet, it's, it can touch and flow. So just be mindful it can happen. But I think we want to be flowing. So a smaller brush will make you paint a bit more detail. And since this one is more like a loosey-goosey kind of sketchy type of situation, a bigger brush helps you to not paint so much detail. So I advise you to go bigger and then don't fuss so much to paint all the shadows. But if you can play a little bit with the yellows and the orange and how it can flow into each other, you will have quite a, a pretty color for your core. And do let the water do the work for you. So, you know, play a little bit so it blow, so it flows into each other. Play a little bit with how much water you have on your brush, where you add it. Add a little bit more yellow, add a little bit more orange. You can leave like a hairline of white if you really don't want the colors to touch. In your brush the whole time. Mix it. And keep on painting. I like to when I when I change color, I like to give my brush a quick little swirl. Um, that's what you can hear to make sure I just get off all that paint.
And it sometimes, well, I shouldn't even say sometimes, most of the times it also dry lighter than you think. So you may have to come back and just add another little wash over it. So even if you use a bigger brush, make sure you have a good point so you can go into all those small areas. When it's drying really light, we can go back and add a little bit more, but let's do the whole thing and then we can actually see if we need to come back more. Remember, let the water do the work for you. So come back with more water. Blend it in. And kind of stripe it down. Check the back. So maybe make sure you want to maybe add a bit more here. So do the same thing. So you kind of want to see if you can paint the same spots again, like yellow here. This step just depends if you want to have it a little bit darker, a little bit more, because yeah, it always dries lighter. Oops, don't go in your windows. And then we want to wait for everything to dry before we go here. If you went into your window by accident, you need a flat brush which bristles all together and you want to push the paint back. So push it, push it, push it. If it's really wet, you may have to wait for it to dry or else the paint will just flow into what you just did. But then you can also take your towel and just suck it up a little bit more and you can kind of push your paint back. See how I did it over here? Like that. So I clean my brush. Not too wet. I push it towards the where I want the paint to go. And suck it up. Always make sure you take a clean spot when you suck it up so you don't transfer any color. And then you can make it softer. Don't know if you can see that. And then we want to do the rest. So I'm going to go for like a gray, so black. I'm still using my big brush, but you can definitely sm swap to a smaller brush, switch to a smaller one if you want to. I'm making an outline. I clean, I suck it up, and I blend it out. Not too much. You don't want to overdo it. If you pull out too much, just drop in color here again so the edge here where it's touching is a bit stays dark too lighter okay now I do need I did need my small brush but I don't know what I did with it okay so we're just going to stick with this, the big one Light gray, so more water, less paint. So on the tire. A little more. And 
Just that one. So you can use just black. You can use paints gray. You can use black with some purple, some blue in it. You can decide how you want this to look. So I do need this to dry before I can do something else. So let's go in this grid. I'm just gonna make a few lines like that. Make sure you have a skinny kind of point situation. I'm gonna take this to make a kind of an outline. And I am doing the grill or the grid, or I don't really know what you call this. And I'm going to do the bottom wheel. Now, like I said, it always dries a little bit lighter. So it will just not be great yet. I'm also going to pretend you can actually do this with your paint pen too. And I'm just going to pretend making a number plate. Should have done the pen and giving an outline for my lights and at the bottom. I think it's good enough for us to go inside. So I want to go, I definitely need, wait, let me just see if I can quickly find my small brush. Because now, Oh, here. Yeah. I'm going to do the one that I always like to use that, that I measure and say it's half my pinky now. Fair enough. So what I want to do now is I want to come with some detail. So this back is darker. And this is a little darker. Here is a little darker. And this face is a little darker. So not too much water, control the water a lot. Clean your brush. I like to then just come back and touch that same color and make this a bit lighter. So even if it flows into each other, I think it will look cool. And here, this back seat. Make your color dark again. So more paint, less water. Meaning you want to get more paint down and go in here. So if this and your wheel is too close together, you need to get this darker. So again, you may have to wait for it to dry so you can actually see. here and you actually want to make this tie also so dark there's also a very dark line coming from one bottom And we will do it inside. Yeah, I'm switching back to my bigger brush. So I kind of like to do the small brush just to get in there. Oh, wait, before you go to the big brush, let's do the light. I'm going to do a little gray swishy here. Just like a little gray, just a swish. 
So Docker again. Because we have the pen outlines, we don't really have to worry so much about getting highlights and all the things, which is very helpful. It is pretty dark. But yeah, because of the pens, we don't really have to worry. Yeah, switch to big brush. Get some concrete. So I'm going to stick with my brown, uh, my black, but I'm adding a tiny bit of brown to it. I'm going to point my brush here and I'm going to add a line. Clean, suck it up, make sure you get rid of that drop of water and blend it out. Drop in color. I'm all the way down. I like to make sure that I go all the way. Clean, clean, clean. Smooshy, smooshy it. Side to side. You can, if you want to, definitely add some of your the bricks. I don't want to. So in there, do not have any white spaces because that will just look weird. While it's still wet, make sure you go back underneath the car. If it's dry, it may not work so well. So make sure you switch brown, black, brown. Oops, don't do that. I just touched my, this bumper thingy. Touch the wheel. Move it a little bit, get your water cup. Blend it. And soft it towards the back. The more water and I like to go kind of side to side. Also, want to make sure I hit here. So, make it a bit darker and then kind of let it flow. It's supposed to be a little lighter spot here, and we can see if we can pull it out. Oh, we can. So, you take your white, your bigger brush, and just make it wet and kind of see if you can pull out. So it looks like the reflection is coming underneath. And then I want to come with, um, I'm just going to do a little line here. And blend it out. I use the same brown color. I think you can use anything you want. It's like a brown with some blue. And for the this little, I don't know, is it a wall? Is it a, what, what am I looking at? Like a little wall. I'm just going to go, be careful if it's wet, right? So it can flow. And I'm just going to kind of paint up and down. Dropping color. Okay. Brown, blue, and kind of a, don't do it, don't, so control the water a lot so you don't have too much water, and then do a few, let it dry a little bit, and then come back and just do filling some spaces. I 
And if you feel it's a little too, too light, you can just do another line and then come back and blend it up. Same a little bit here, uneven. So again, your big brush make that you cannot paint too much detail, which is kind of nice. Then the windows still look weird. I'm using the same brown and paint gray, blackish kind of color. And I basically want to do a few swishes. Don't overdo it. One color and then come back and do a few in a different, like in a darker color. And you can even blend it out a bit, but be careful if your brush is too wet, you may just in the end up kind of flowy, but you want uneven because it's definitely just a reflection. And then we can see a bit of grass over here. So now I even want to go into a bigger brush. This one is kind of my full pinky. And I want to add some grass. I'm not going to add too much. Um, the picture is pretty grassy green, so you can definitely go grassy green. I'm taking my olive and I make a little puddle. I take a teal. I add one hair of purple in it. I'm dipping my brush into my water cup before I start. And I'm going to do uneven, kind of tap, tap, tap. Go into your windows. Make sure you touch your car. I clean my brush, I come with water and I kind of blend it out a bit more. More water, let it kind of flow and become bigger. Right here. Now, this is my first layer. So, Light is definitely okay. And then when you get to the other side of the lamp, I would go shorter. Meaning, suck it up. If you just come and paint directly with your brush out of the water cup, you may have too much water. And then it will just take a little longer to dry. Also make sure you go, you touch your pole. So touch everywhere where you think you, where you can see. So it, it, there's not weird space, white spaces. Go in here. And you can even do a little swish of green especially on the top section. This should be dry before you do it. So if it's wet, don't do it. Just in case it feels like you can see something. But my green is very light. Lots of water. And when you have your first layer down, it's a little light. I like that I made it very uneven. Come back and make a darker color. Purple. Olive green, teal green. You can even add a little bit of blue. Maybe some grass green. Mix a nice dark color. I'm still staying with my bigger brush. It's going to be, let me see. So if you look at your paper and it's shiny, see how it's shiny, it's still a bit wet. So let's see if we start painting. So now I only want to do some darker areas, kind of framing it, but not not just, not like a frame frame, just like here and there. Okay, so I'm touching. I can see that it's still blending, still wet. 
I'm also going to go a little in my window. Remember, you don't want to have these light spots. I'm touching the roof. Tap, tap, tap. Clean, suck it up. Make sure you blend it out so it doesn't look like you outlined your car. Maybe drop in here and there. More. Take your big brush, tap, tap, tap on top to kind of blend it more. Don't forget to go on this side a little bit. And while it's still wet, it will flow really nice. And you don't have to blend everything in, of course. And then maybe one more darker shade. So less water, more paint. See if you can touch here and there. You don't have to do it everywhere. I'm taking my smaller brush, I'm making it wet, and I just want to blend in some of the green if it's a little weird. Take some brown, almost the same color you did over here for the window, and if you just want to do a few little swishes over it to make that, that green a bit dirty, so it looks like the reflection. And then this Light is so white, we want to do a soft just here at the bottom. And then I also want to do kind of a nice C shape. And another one. And another one here. And forward in here. So not a lot of detail. All good. I'll just align there to just make it a bit darker there. And then this is it. Oh, wait. And then let's just check the lights. I think the lights are like half painted. And this is good enough for that little guard.